Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and I welcome you back to my YouTube channel. So we are done with chapter number 3 of what? Of the electronic devices and circuits. Today we start a new topic, a new chapter that is what? Chapter number 4 that is the DC biasing of BJTs. So we start with the DC biasing of BJTs today. So, uh, well, you know the basic meaning, you know very well. DC. So, yes, what is DC? Biasing. What is biasing? BJT. So, each and every term you are quite familiar with. Right? Yes. So, the, the motive of this thing is that how to employ the BJT inside of a circuit. So, this chapter basically is just a simple chapter. You need to have your uh, 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 network analysis skills. KVL to the loop. KCL at a node. Right? So, these are some things you would be applying the KVL. Then you would be finding the unknown parameters. The thing is quite simple. Fine. Yes. So, first of all, why? What is biasing? So, biasing is what? It's the application of the external DC supply to what? To set up a desired level of voltage and current. Yes. Yes. You know this. We've seen in the biasing of the diode as well. The same concept is over here of biasing. If you want me to write it down, so I will write it down. That biasing is what? Biasing is the application of a DC source, a DC supply to set up a desired value of voltage and current. So you will give it a supply so of course of course a voltage would be set up across it and of course a current would flow through it and that is known as the biasing right yes bjt is the bipolar junction transistor your three terminal device it may be npn it may be pnp the three terminals are what collector base emitter fine yes so what do we have is basically you mostly mostly the the, the application of the B, uh, bjt is what it's either an amplifier or it is a switch so basically the switch is from the digital electronics point of view so we are not interested in that thing the analog electronics over here this part of the course is from the analog side so we are interested in the bjt as an amplifier so where is the bjt as an amplifier used when the bjt is in the active mode of operation and the active mode is what when when the when one when the collector base junction is emitter base junction is forward biased and the collector base junction is reverse biased right so that is this will act as an amplifier how will it as an amplifier amplifier is what it will increase the amplitude of the signal applied to it so and that signal is what that signal would be an ac signal we're not talking about the amplification of this dc signal there is a difference in this dc biasing and that ac signal and what is that so the thing is that this dc biasing is basically turning on the device this dc biasing is turning on the amplifier it's giving the power to the amplifier to turn it on right as one of our teachers gave us an example if you want to to, to you know cool your room so you have to turn on the air conditioner right so you turn to turn it on the power plug button to turn on the power plug button and turn on the ac this is what this is the dc biasing for the ac yes and then you for instance you want to set the temperature you want to uh, 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 you know set the fan speed etc you give it a signal through the remote through the remote yes so what would, what is that that is the ac signal you have applied to that ac signal is applied after turning on the device so this dc biasing this is turning on the device Yes, this DC biasing is turning on the device. Turning on the device. Whereas the AC signal is what? 
that is then then that is fed after turning on yes yes so ac signal is fed after turning on this is the difference between the the the, the what this thing right yes application of dc voltage to desired value of voltage and current and this would give you what this would give you an operating point the desired value and current is that that is the operating point of the circuit and at the operating point the sinusoidal input is applied over which it oscillates we'll study it in the detail in the coming sections so what do you have is let me just read it out over here uh, DC and AC response both are necessary DC and AC can be done separately right uh, okay biasing is this thing and anyways so in the active region in the active region so let us consider the common emitter configuration with the, in the active region of operation in the active region of operation where we also study the load line load line one other concept is the load line again as we studied in the diode so these are the same things again load line so load line is obtained from what it's obtained from the given circuit from the given load right so let's say considering the the, the common emitter configuration an npn transistor is considered with the common emitter configuration right yes so you have this to be forward biased and this to be reverse biased or you can say VCC right so this is for instance VBB this is VCC these are the two biasing potentials so you would have this is RB the base current would be the entering current IB the collector current would be the would be the entering current again this is rc the current through it is ic and and the emitter current is the leaving current ie so so have a look over here the emitter is common to both how can i say that i am saying this on the base that emitter is grounded yes the input is at one side the output is at the other side so the input is at the base the output is at the collector this is a common emitter configuration and have a look from the direction of the arrow of the signal this is an npn transistor this is an npn transistor fine yes so this is a common emitter configuration so you can apply kvls to the input loop and to the output loops so if you say the kvl to input loop so what do you have vbb then this would be a voltage drop so you have a minus ib times rb and then this would also be over here plus minus vbe would also be over here minus vbe and this is equal to zero right similarly now we can apply the kvl to the output loop kvl kvl to output loop this would be what let's say i'm i'm doing it in this direction so vcc minus ic rc you would have a plus two minus voltage drop over here from the collector to emitter also so you have a minus vce and this is equal to zero right yes now you also know you also know the output characteristics of the common emitter configuration those are what those are the output current versus the output voltage so ic versus vce isn't it like this and these are some some sort of uh, 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 wait a minute you, these are these sort of some curves for different values of ib right you know how to draw them properly these are the i the the output characteristics ic versus vce but you need to draw a load line so load line is what load line is determined from the output equation loop 
from the output equation kvl now how is that so have a look the y-axis is the ic the x-axis is the vce so from over here you can write y in terms of x so you can say what that your ic would be what it would be vcc minus vce upon upon rc so have a look this is the case now you need to draw a straight line from this equation you need to draw a straight this is the equation of a straight line y is equal to mx plus c right so you can find that the two minimum two points are required to draw a line so you can draw it from the intercepts y intercept x intercept x is zero which means vcc is zero so ic would be what it would be vcc upon rc ic is vcc upon rc and when is this happening when vce is equal to zero volts so which means let's say somewhere over here i'll do it with a different color and similarly when y is zero when ic is zero so the case would be that vcc vce would be equal to vcc when ic is equal to zero so these are the two intercepts these are the two intercepts for instance one is over here this is what vcc by rc and let's say other is over here it's vc c so join these two points join these two points and this is it so the intersection the intersection of the output characteristics with the load line will give you the proper value of the desired current and voltage and that is what that is the operating point of the circuit yes yes but have a look have a look which one of this is the operating point is this the intersection operating point is this one is this one these are for different values ib1 ib2 say say ib3 which one of this is now your q point so that depends on the value of this ib and this ib uh, is what this ib comes out to be vbb minus vbe upon rb so have a look this is a fixed value because the passing potential vbb is a fixed value the vbe is just a simple a p to n voltage that would be 0.7 for silicon 0.3 for germanium and whatever for gallium arsenide so again a fixed value and the base resistance is again a fixed value so let's say this ib2 this ib2 was that uh, which came over here so this point this point would be your operating point and the coordinates of this point are then labeled as what are labeled as v c e q and over here this one is labeled as i c q q stand for what for the q point for the operating point it's called the quiescent point or whatever is the is the pronunciation of that yes yes so just let me write over here intersection of of characteristics device characteristics with load line is equal to q point this q point is what this is the operating point let me name it as quiescent point operating point it has got multiple names the q stand for quiet for still for unvarying for inactive so you've got a multiple names for this right yes so this is the operating point now what do we have further one other thing one other thing maybe somewhere you come across this sort of a thing that they've also applied the kvl to the input loop and from here they have derived y is equal to mx plus c and they've plotted it on the the input characteristics graph and then the load line and they say that this is the input operating point over here we have done it for the output row loop the kvl was applied to the output loop the output characteristics were drawn the load line was drawn and we say this is the operating point so somewhere you may come across that this is called the output operating point and you also may have an input operating point and that would be based on this kvl equation you have load line from here and you have the input characteristics of the device so you plot them the intersection is called the input load line but 
the input operating point but the proper thing the proper thing is this one is the output we got load line so load load is what load is on the output side it's never on the input side yes so load line whenever we talk of the load line we talk of the output side and therefore we draw it on the output characteristics and we only have a single operating point if you come across that so that may also be right you know but the proper thing is this one the output on the output side right yes sir the slope of the line the slope of the line the slope of this line have a look is it not negative 1 over rc it is so slope is equal to minus 1 over rc the slope of the line which means if the rc increases the slope would decrease if the rc decreases the slope would increase so have a look have a look let me draw this or let us discuss it later or no wait where has the book just shown it let me check if the book has shown it over here well, it has not shown it over here, but let us see. Okay, so if this one is the case, the same VCC, okay, the same VCC. So this one is, let's say for RC2. Now this would be for VCC over RC, let's say, decrease so this will increase this is for one and and this one this one is for vcc upon rc3 where rc3 is the greatest rc3 is greater than rc2 and it's in, in fact greater than rc1 so this is what happens when it is changing with respect to the resistance so have a look the operating point is also changing the operating point is also changing if you are changing the resistance if you're changing the resistance the load line is changing and if the load line is changing hence the operating point of the circuit is also changing yes yes so you have to keep the operating point in a particular limit similarly if you change the value of ib if you change the value of IB, so that is quite obvious from this. So, so this is one point uh, considering the red. So this for IB2, this is the point for IB1, this is the point for IB3, this is the point. So with respect to IB, the Q point is also changing. And finally, with respect to VCC, with respect to VCC, what happens? So if this is vcc uh, one let's say if this is vcc one or let me draw a separate graph for this if you want to draw me if you want me to draw a separate graph for this so if this is your ic this is your vce so if this is the graph for vcc one then for vcc two this would be the case for vcc three this would be the case where VCC1 is the greatest, of course. Of course, VCC1 is the greatest. And you can see. So, the operating point is moving. Let's say, for instance, for instance, this was the, the reference value of IB. With respect to this, we are taking the Q point. So, have a look, have a look. What is happening? The Q point is changing with respect to IB. Right, what is next? So, if the Q point is in the active region, if Q point is in the active region, this means what? That the BJT is acting as an amplifier. Yes, yes. So, have a look. If Q point is in active region, this implies what? That your BJT is working as an amplifier right right now why is the placing of a of a q point important so because it tells you the region of operation the placing 
where the, the placing on the load curve on the output characteristics of the Q point is important because it tells you the region of operation of the amplifier of, of the BJT over here it is in the center so in the center it is good in the center it is acting as an amplifier why because this is an active region the more it goes towards the left it is going to the saturation region which is not good the more it is going to the right it is going to the cutoff region it is not good we are not interested in the saturation and in the cutoff region in 1D it is acting as an on switch in the other it is acting as an off switch we do not require it over here we will see it in the whenever it is required in the power electronic suite we do it the, over there over here we want it to operate as an amplifier we would want the Q point to stay in the middle we would want to stay in the middle why in the middle because this is equidistant from both the cutoff region cutoff region and the saturation region so the AC signal would not go into that region it would not be distorted it would only be amplified yes yes how do we decide where to buy a transistor so that is of course on your basis of your needs over here I said again and again we want to operate it in the amplifier so the Q point should be in the active region right okay if uh, I say one thing, if I say one thing, if I say we not the output voltage over here is VCE, the output voltage is VCE, right? Yes, yes. So the power dissipation, the power dissipation is what? It's VCE times IC, the output quantity is right? Yes. Or I could say VCE value. So the VCE value I have from somewhere over here is this one, VCC minus ICRC. VCC minus IC RC times IC yes and over here it is VCC IC VCC IC minus IC squared RC yes yes if you take the derivative of this this is your power dissipation so if I take the derivative of the power dissipation with respect to the current IC so have a look what do I have I have VCC minus two times uh, no minus two times icrc right icrc yes yes now if i equate it to zero if i equate it to zero and and why do i need to equate it to zero so for the minimum we, we take the derivative and then equate it to zero for the optimum optimum results you know this from your differential calculus right so if you get it to zero you get the value of ic as what ic comes out to be vcc upon 2rc ic comes out to be vcc upon 2rc and this implies what that v naught v naught is equal to uh, vce which is equal to vcc by 2 v naught is equal to we see e so which is equal to vcc by 2 vcc by 2 means what that for the max for the for the optimum operation for the best operation for the minimum power loss or whatever it is what do you have to do you have to set your operating point at the middle at vcc by 2 yes yes next if i take the derivative of it again let's say i have the second derivative d squared p d i c 2 so what would it happen this would become zero and you would have a negative 2 r c negative 2 r c now as this is less than zero this means that this is the point of maxima less than zero this implies that this is the point of maxima and you know this from your calculus okay I don't know this I don't know these things in detail I can't explain them watch the first derivative is zero and the second derivative is negative this implies that this is the point of maxima right yes so this means that you have maximum power dissipation at midpoint at the midpoint you have maximum power dissipation 
this implies what you have maximum power dissipation at midpoint so this is the disadvantage of taking the midpoint in the active region this could you could say that this is the disadvantage so maybe i said over here uh, over here is that this was for the optimum value so the optimum value yes so we are optimum uh, in in whatever case you are considering so over here we, we want the optimum to be the to be the to be the maximum value right so this is the case so over here at the midpoint you have the maximum power loss you have the maximum power dissipation and that is the disadvantage of this thing is that fine it is let's say what do we have next or let's say we talk about the q point stability or do we finish this video over here because this is just getting boring let's see if i have any point over here and then we'll move on to to this to the q point stability in the in the next video yes so let's say we move on to the q point stability in the next video because this would get boring so the dc biasing of bgt we did not start it properly but uh, we want to just have an overview first first we want to have an overview and then we will get into the detailed discussion over it right yes so till the next video see you in the next video till then take care goodbye